Well, uh, on trade, you don't have to do as much with the everyday voter because the everyday voter is not focused as much on individual trade agreements. And when you talk about the TPP, yeah, it's funny, I go to Tokyo. And uh, during this, this spring, there was an Occupy Tokyo movement in Rapungi Crossing. There were three Japanese people there. They were holding signs. Two of them were anti-TPP. And, and so there was some media there. And folks, when I was in Tokyo for a week, and people were asking me, so what do people think about the TPP in the US? I'm like, well, first, they don't know what it is. So this is not a problem, right? It's like when the Canadians will say, well, you know, what does the US, what does the US think about Canada? I'm like, you know what? The US doesn't think much about Canada. And from your perspective, that's probably useful. Because if they thought more about Canada, they'd stop you from doing stuff with China. So do you really want that, right? I mean, seriously, don't be obnoxious about it, Canadians. Ask, tell me what you really want. Because you know, if they want to be avoided, it's better for them. Um, I, 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 so, I mean, not, not to in any way undermine or dispense with the importance of Americans that don't support free trade. I am less concerned about being able to get TPP through the working class in the United States. I'm more concerned about what that will mean for isolationism generally, what it will mean for the stuff that isn't as technical, what it's going to mean for the U.S. actually you know, uh, being engaged on an issue like Iran or Syria, or Afghanistan to the extent that we need to. Um, what it means for the United States supporting a climate deal. Uh, what it means for the United States really doing a whole bunch of lifting because just because there won't be the United States as the world's sole global superpower, the US is still by far the strongest leader out there. No one is close, right? It's not like they're catching up fast. No one is close. On the military, no one is close. On entrepreneurship, no one is close. Um, on experience and doing this stuff globally and, and existing architecture, no one is close. So if the US is not prepared to do it because of domestic unpopularity, because people say, well, why are you gonna spend money on foreign aid when you don't fix New Orleans? A very reasonable point. Then who else is gonna do it? I mean,